Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Professor Cook Reacts. On our first episode ever, we're doing a, uh, a C-Virus special. The T-Virus. I kind of like the social distancing a little bit. Uh, okay. I always feel like everybody's invading my personal space. Keep away from that personal space. You're a little too close. Can you... Uh... Sorry, man. Uh... Yeah. Whoa, whoa, hey! Who's around me right now? Who's around me? This is one of my good friends, Antonio. I'll do a little bump here. Hello. C virus style. That's right. Um, he's an actor by trade. Yep. Uh, directs, kind of a jack of all trades. Right. But um, he's going to be here today talking a little bit about, from an actor's perspective, uh, in the films we're going to review, which is Outbreak. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about this opening scene. It really sets the tone. Wartime, impending doom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. At moments, and it feels like little glimmers of hope. We need supplies. Plasma, penicillin. We'll get you everything you need, doctor. And then, they dropped the bomb yeah. on me. <laughs> All of a sudden. Man. A parachute and it's not a care package. The way that they shot this wow. is pretty great. It looks still, it holds yeah. up, yeah. you know. You can tell that it's it not CG. Really you can tell that they did probably models. What uh, do you mean? Like uh, miniatures. Oh. And then uh, blew up the miniatures. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Because it looks still very photo real. And this is back in 95. Um, so. You know, if you think back then, um, CGI was not that great. Yeah. The only movies that really hold up from that kind of era, I would say, are Terminator 2. Cameron's kind of obsessiveness with um, uh, computer-generated images. And he did a lot of practical stuff. Uh, and this this definitely reigns true. They did a lot of practical in this. Hmm. Corona. <coughs> How do they get that explosion to look like a, like a, a nuclear explosion? Like... Is that without so CGI? They, so what sells this explosion though is uh, this next shot, which is uh, kind of a whiteout, and they could have uh, simply just uh, um, racked or opened the iris. Oh, oh, okay. Or they could have done it photochemically, where they would have pushed it a few stops. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan Freeman's introduction. Mm -hmm. What do we think? I like it. He's a he's a what is he a general? General, yeah. Uh, One star. You can see it on the. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Good to see you, sir. Sam. Thought if I showed my star around here, it might speed things up for you. Morgan Freeman's always been strong in pretty much every role he's played. So let's talk about his aging. Uh, has he aged since this film? I, I really feel yeah. This is ninety five. I really feel he's some sort of vampire or something. Well, he does play God a lot. You must be Bruce. Morongo virus, Morongo casino virus. They introduce Cuba, Cuba's character. He's never been on the field. Mm hmm. Right? My boy Cuba. I think this was a. Uh, this was right after Boys Boys in the Hood, right? Uh, a little Jack bit after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so it was right it was, in that pocket. Yeah, Boys in the Hood, I think it was around 91. Uh, okay. This is 95. And then uh, Jay McGuire is 96, if memory oh, okay. serves me correctly. So it's just right in the middle for him. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, he was in A Few Good Men. Oh, yeah. That was in between two? Uh, I think that was 92 -ish. Okay. Oh, shoot. Yeah, 92 or 93. I think it was 92, though. This role was good for him then, I mean, coming out of those roles because he Yeah, was... yeah, this is a pretty big role. Right. Supporting, but, um, uh, yeah, I'll, this scene where they, where they go to the village, what do you think of his performance in that? I mean, I think that, honestly... <laughs> I, this is one of my, my favorite performances in this film from him because uh, it's really showing the the realism of somebody who may have it all technically or in the books, but once they get straight into the to the dirt and the grit, they freak out. He's losing it. And you could feel it, you know, as the film progresses, he got a little bit more comfortable. Right. You know, Dustin Hoffman's, I guess. 
kind of pushiness mm-hmm. for him kind of helps him. Right. And they, they have like an interesting uh, relationship. Helmet on! Keep his helmet on! No. Don't expose himself, Casey! <coughs> Damn it! Isolate him! Isolate him! Throws up in his suit. Yeah, he throws up in his suit. I just want to talk a little bit about the sound of that. The sound in this film is excellent. Uh, first of all, uh, the helicopters coming in and everything oh, yeah. like that. The score there is amazing. You know, it sounds kind of like ancestral drum. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like it's supposed to be kind of African. It sounds a little bit like, probably like taiko drums or something like that. Oh, uh, but which works? is a Japanese drum. Okay. Uh, but I think it works for this. The yeah, the, the sound of the, you know, throwing up in the mask. No. No. Just and then the voice is a little distorted, like they're talking through plastic. We can as soon as we could. The Mutumbo yes. uh, virus. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's talk about uh, Morgan Freeman and Dustin Hoffman's character in this office scene here. Oh, Dustin Hoffman gave Morgan Freeman uh, a piece of his mind, and Morgan Freeman didn't appreciate that. No, that <laughs> look he gave him. Boy, it was the coldest who you think you're talking to motherfucker I ever seen. It's about that sacred oath that we took, remember? Billy, we've been friends for 20 years. Yes, we're friends, Sam, but I'm also your boss. He felt like the one-star general. He <laughs> did not want to mess around with him. Yeah, that was so good. It was so real. This monkey actor is stellar. Brilliant. This monkey yeah. falls out like he <laughs> is, oh my God. Where's it's this theater. monkey study, man? Julian? Uh, yes. Right, when it becomes airborne. Right. Yo, you feel it. With that shot where they're like, the guy coughs and you can see like the germs go. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that shot says everything. This really sent chills down my spine. And if you think about uh, the coronavirus as being airborne, because it is airborne, people. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, this really sent chills down my spine. I lost sleep over this. Mm. I'm yeah. airborne what i just saw that one the uh the germs go into the air vent yeah it looked like uh, uh In- impactful performance but kind of messed up by the dating of the yeah. cg and that's what some of these movies do to me mm. I-, I enjoy them for what they are but when yeah. i when the cgi pops in i'm like wow well hello it only has again 85 hours of flight experience wow at this moment Right, uh, in the film. Right. Uh, to fly that well after 85 hours of experience. What's the average amount of hours you need before you can fly? Uh, to fly well, thousands of hours. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's a little break in the story logic okay. here, okay. right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a, there's a couple moments in this film that really kind of uh, this is something I teach my students uh, breakage of the story logic. Yeah, don't yeah. Make sense. That 85 hours and then out flying these ace fighters, uh, one of them uh, in pursuit of them uh, here uh, that they outfly is flying a general, a two <laughs> like a two star general. <laughs> Colonel, we're going low. 
because if they're fugitives, <laughs> right, and they're flying to like the military's helicopter, yeah, everybody's looking. They're for flying them. all the way up to like San Francisco <laughs> area and beyond, and then flying out to this ship that they're about to fly to, uh, and Mister Eighty Five Hours pulls up next to the shipping, <laughs> the ship through fog. Right, they even make a moment of it. There. Ty Cook, Seattle. That's it. Somehow find the ship in the middle of this fog, and then he pulls next to it to the point where Dustin Hoffman can just jump from the helicopter to the ship. That's so unrealistic. Oh, 85 flying under a bridge. Well, why don't you decide? I'm really not up to it. I'm Hang on. Oh, I would have said over. Wires, wires, two is on left. What should I do, sir? Stay on him, get him out of the air. The level of pilots you'd have to be to do some pull off something like that would be like tens of thousands, Amen. if not twenties of thousands of hours in flight. He watched the YouTube video. YouTube tutorial in 95. Yeah. And uh, with his AOL CD. Because he was in the military. You know, they had. Oh, yeah. They had the, the, you know, oh. free forever uh, CDs. <laughs> Here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> Oh my god, with the grin. <laughs> the thumbs up is <laughs> probably the cheesiest thing mm -hmm. I've seen mm -hmm. <laughs> in a while. <laughs> I wonder what the director said to him to get that performance. <laughs> like, how many takes? Why did he? Why did the director and editor choose that he take? Chose that one. You know, <laughs> Cuba Gooding probably gave him like a right. Hey man, yeah, like good on you. <laughs> Good on you, thumbs up. They this want, is uh, they want this one. is the full Belbita player, <laughs> the full Gouda sharp cheddar. They man. want that one. And then he contracts the virus. Don't cover it up, people. So again, story logic break here. The mom goes to the uh, watch this newscast. And he's like, "Get on wire from the mom." Don't even go near her. Right? You can do. And then, is, how does she connect monkey, that to her daughter? Call number at the center. For disease control him? in Atlanta. Oh, the right. <laughs> this shot. That zoom in, though. Zoom in. Turn that shit fucking down. Do not go near it. Do not. Come on. Yeah. And then he's trying to shoot at him with a shotgun. In the air. Bam. That's a nice shotgun, but they don't get the get it. Yeah, he, he just wanted to bust that. That was the director being like, oh, yeah, we got the budget for it. Yeah, yeah, let him shoot at it, you know? <laughs> it's good for the shot. It looks good for the shot. It's Production like, nah. Come on, man. You ain't paying attention to the actual... Story. I would have took they that want to shot. impress people with the production value. I would have taken that. Directors shot. fall into that trap sometimes. Don't be that director. <laughs> but be that actor that asks for the shotgun. Uh, climax of the film, right? Oh, this is the climax? I never understood that. <laughs> oh, really? It's the final showdown. I don't get it. I never. So I always thought that the climax. Yeah, this is the climax. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's the build up, right? Uh, that's what it all builds up. It's the explosion of the build up. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of climax are we talking about, right? Any now? climax. I thought they all were uh, relative. No, no, no. All nah, right, cool. Nah. The climax of the film is the final face-off with good versus evil, okay. where they settle the scores. The last one. The theme is stated of the film, okay. right? What it's all about. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the climax. Okay. You know. Oh, oh. Not that one. Not that one. No. Nah. Oh, oh. Art. Exactly. You know, and I think that's the best outlet for it. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, if you're feeling something, find a way to express it in art. For you sure. know what I mean? Our 
we need that, especially now more than ever, I feel, you know, with being, you know, stuck inside and all of that. We need those outlets for, you know, for sure. our mental well-being. You know what I mean? For sure. That's why I think art is so important. You know what I mean? So important for our psyche as, you know, oh, uh, you know, Earth community. Oh.